hello dear students assalamu alaikum i hope you will be fine my name is engineer mir basmul shah i am lecturer department of technology sarhad university of science and information technology shah as i am teaching you subject design of hydraulic structure today is your lecture number 5 in lecture number 5 we will continue the topic about river training works which we study about marginal ones light banks spurs and groins the other topics were already covered in lecture number 4 today we will continue about studying groins the function of groins is similar to that of spur but these are impervious permanent structures constructed on the curve of a river to pocket the river bank from erosion groins are permanent structure and they are constructed on the curve of the river banks to protect the river banks from erosion and they are impervious structures and their function is similar to that of spurs they extend from the bank towards the bed by making an angle of 60 degree to 75 degree with the bank their angle of construction is 60 degree to 75 degree with the river bank and they are extended towards the bed of the bank the angle may be towards the upstream or downstream side sometimes it is made perpendicular to the river bank these are constructed with rubber masonry in trapezoidal section and the surface is finished with stone pitching or concrete blocks sometimes the construction is perpendicular to the river bank and they are constructed with rubber masonry in trapezoidal shape or section and the surface is finished with concrete blocks with stone pitching or with stone pitching the stone pitching or concrete blocks are set with rich cement mortar rich cement mortar is provided to the stone pitching or concrete blocks the length of the groin depends on the width and nature of the river the length of the groin depends on the conditions of the river the top width varies from 3 meter to 4 meter and the side slopes may be 1 and a half ratio 1 or 2 and a half ratio 1 the groins are provided in series throughout the affected length of the river the spacing between the adjacent groins is generally kept as 2l where l is the length of the groin these are recommended for rivers where the permanent solution for erosion control is extremely necessary so groins are provided at places where permanent solution for erosion is required the length between two adjacent groins is kept as 2l and l is the where l is the length of the groin and and they are provided in a series throughout the affected length of the river bank at the affected length the velocity of flow will be very high because of which erosion takes place so they are provided in a series throughout that affected length and the top the top width is about 3 to 4 meter at side side slopes are 1 and a half ratio 1 or 2 ratio 1 and their length depends upon the nature of the river here is a section of groin rubble masonry with rich cement mortar is provided and concrete blocks or stone pitching is provided on the sides the side slopes are 1 and a half ratio 1 
the groins may be designed or designated as follows number a attracting groins the groin which is constructed obliquely to the bank by making an angle of 60 degree to 75 degree towards the downstream is known as attracting groin so groins which are constructed towards the downstream side at an angle of 60 degree to 75 degree are known as attracting groin Here the flow of water is attracted towards the bank and the velocity of flow is reduced to such an extent that it cannot cause any erosion to the bank. These groins are constructed in such a manner that the flow of water is attracted towards, these, towards the bank and the velocity of flow is reduced to such an extent that it cannot cause any erosion. However, a bank protected of stone pitching is also provided. Here is the diagram of attracting groin. Attracting groins are provided at an angle of 60 degree to 75 degree. The length between two adjacent groins is 2L where L is the length of groin. They are provided on the affected area of the river bank. At the affected area, the velocity of flow is very high, which causes erosion. So for that purpose, on the bank of the river, stone pitching is also provided while the groins, attracting groins, reduce the velocity of flow. When the flowing water touches these groins, the wear velocity reduces and they slow, move slowly in that part of the river up to which the groins are installed or constructed and hence they protect the bank from erosion. The second is repelling groin. Groin which is aligned towards upstream at an angle of 60 degree to 75 degree with the rear bank is known as repelling groin. Repelling groins are constructed at an angle of 60 degree to 75 degree with the rear bank and they are aligned towards the upstream side of the river bank. A still water pocket is formed on the upstream, upstream side where silting takes place. By constructing the repelling groin, silting, walker, uh, silting pockets or water silting pockets are formed in which silting takes place here the bank protection is not necessary because the flow of water does not touch the bank and there is no effect of erosion on the banks by constructing repelling groins the river water does not touch the river banks and hence the effect of erosion does not take place but still boulder pitching should be provided for safety here is the repelling groin in repelling groin for safety purpose store pitching is provided although they are not necessary but for safety purpose it is provided on the side of the river bank the length between two adjacent groins is 2L, where L is the length of the groin and they are provided towards the, towards the or aligned towards the upstream side at an angle of 60 degree to 75 degree because of which they form water pockets in which silting takes place. The 
next type is deflecting groin. The groin which is constructed perpendicular to the river bank is known as deflecting groin. Here is the deflecting groin. They are constructed perpendicular to the river bank means at an angle of 90 degree. Here the flow of water is deflected from bank by the perpendicular obstruction that is groin. The flow of water follows an undulating path just outside the head of the groin. An eddy current is formed on the upstream side of the groin. This eddy current will not affect the river bank but the bank protected protection is provided for safety. This is the deflecting groin. They are constructed at an angle of 90 degree or perpendicular to the river bank. Also, stone pitching is provided on the side of the river bank. When water strikes these groins, the velocity decreases and they create a discard on the upstream side of the pocket sorry on the upstream side of the groin which may cause erosion of the bank but for that purpose or to control the erosion because of this eddy current stone pitching is provided so they cannot cause any erosion after striking this groin the water slowly moves towards this groin here by when this water strikes this groin the velocity decreases and when it moves and strikes this groin the velocity decreases more and then they slowly moves in the river without causing any disturbance or erosion so these are the different types of groins which are constructed on the sides of the river banks to protect the river banks from erosion Next topic is comparison between spur and groins. In column 1 we have spurs and in column 2 we have groins. Number 1, spur is a temporary structure while groin is a permanent structure. Number 2, spur is permeable while groin is impermeable. Spurs are structures through which water can easily pass while groins are impermeable structure and water cannot pass through it. Number 3. It is constructed with bamboo pile, chipper pile, sandbags, boulders etc. While groins are constructed with rubble masonry with cement border. Number 4. It requires repair works number of wild groins does not re require any repair works. Number five, spurs is recommended for small rivers while groins is recommended for large rivers. Number six, spurs are useful for low or medium velocity of flow while groins are suitable for high velocity of flow. So these are the different <coughs> so this is the comparison between spur and groins next is shutters and gates functions of shutters and gates are to maintain pond level and to raise the water level during low flow so these are the different functions of shutters and gates. Next is silt regulation works. The entry of silt into a canal which takes off from a headwork can be reduced by constructing certain special works called silt control works. The entry of silt into the canal is the major problem for which different 
construction is done or special construction work is done to reduce the entry of silt into the canal and these works are called silt regulation works. These works may be classified into the following two types. Number A, silt excluders. Number two, silt ejectors. Silt excluders. Silt excluders are those works which are constructed on the bed of the river that is upstream of the head regulator. Silt excluders are constructed on the upstream of the head regulator. The clear water enters the head regulator and silted water enter, enters the silt excluder. In this type of work, the silt is removed from the water before it enters the canal. Silt excluders are structures which are constructed on the bed of the river on the upstream side of the head regulator. In this, by constructing these silt excluder, clear water enters the head regulator and the silted water is removed or enters the silt excluder through which they are excluded. In this type of works, the silt is removed from water before the water enters the canal. Here is the diagram of silt excluders. This is the diagram of silt excluder. The diagram of silt excluder includes tunnel slabs which is placed on the top of the tunnels. Piers, small piers or small walls are constructed on the crust or floor level of the under sluices and a tunnel slab is provided on the top. The silted water enters these tunnels and they are excluded through under sluices while the clear water moves on the top of the slab and they are diverted towards the regulator sides. Next is silt ejector. Silt ejectors are also called silt extractors and, the, and are those devices which extract the silt from the canal water after the silted water has traveled a certain distance in the uptake canal. Ejectors are also known as silt extractor and these are the devices which are installed at a certain distance when the water or the silted water travel a certain distance in the uptaking canal. These works are therefore constructed on the bed of the canal and the little distance downstream from the head regulator. The silt extractors or silt ejectors are constructed on the bed of the canal at some distance from the head regulator on the downstream side. Here is the diagram or plan of the silt ejectors or plan of silt ejectors. Silt ejectors are installed at some distance in the canal when water enters the head regulator they travel some distance and then they enter the silt ejectors where the silt from the water is ejected through silt ejectors or some machinery or pump is provided to remove this the silt from the water and this is the end of our today's lecture.